Anoka is angina with no obstructive coronary arteries. Um, it is what it says on the tin. So the clinician should be clear that the symptom is indeed angina. Uh, it's a cardiac symptom consequent on myocardial ischemia in a patient who has unobstructed coronary arteries. And the implication is that this is the syndrome of, of ischemia with no obstructive coronary arteries. In other words, in OCA, with microvascular angina and or vasospastic angina uh, implicated. In terms of prevalence, in unselected patient populations, such as referrals to a chest pain clinic, potentially two in five patients with angina, possibly higher and certainly higher than those patients with obstructive coronary narrowings who represent the small minority of patients attending a chest pain clinic. The symptoms of ANOCA are uh, a sense of insufficiency in the chest that may manifest as uh, chest pain, throat tightness radiating to the left arm. The symptoms may occur with effort, as is typical angina, um, or they may be less typical occurring spontaneously, such as um, after uh, with emotional stress, sometimes at night, sometimes hours after exertion, um, and the patient starts to become habituated to these symptoms, so they can become typical for the patient, even if they may be atypical for the clinician. Tests should be personalised to the patient in the setting. So if the clinician is um, undertaking a review of a patient in the outpatient setting, then non-invasive uh, tests would be relevant um, to confirm a diagnosis of ANOCA. Um, coronary angiography would be relevant, potentially by CT. Um, and then inducible ischemia should be assessed with uh, stress echocardiography or stress perfusion MRI or indeed PET. Uh, in the cath lab, where patients might be selected for invasive management, then a diagnostic guide wire to measure coronary flow reserve and coronary resistance. Uh, and if available with experience, uh, provocative testing with acetylcholine. Again, treatment should be personalised to the patient. Is this the first time, the first interaction with the patient? Are they naive to therapy? Or is this a patient who has had anginal symptoms for many years, um, has potentially passed between different clinicians with different treatments? So at the point of care, one needs to be mindful about the treatments for the patient. Um, for microvascular angina, um, a beta blocker may be helpful where there is uh, microvascular spasm or epicardial spasm, a calcium channel is, uh, blocker can be helpful. Nitrates can be helpful for microvascular angina. Um, and then preventive therapies, if there is atherosclerosis, um, an antiplatelet, a statin, and potentially an ACE inhibitor uh, balanced against the blood pressure level.